If you're anything like me, you started thinking about space. And space is one of those things that once you start thinking about it, you can never stop. You're gonna start looking up videos, you're gonna start reading articles. But if you're in the beginning of that journey, you probably don't quite know where to begin. So I will tell you my story, my very quick story, of how I went from noob to somewhat of a space nerd. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Pavel Rzhov, and on this channel, I'd like to talk about space, biotech, and everything in between. So I'm really excited to have you here. First of all, thank you so much for joining me. And again, I went from a complete noob to a, a bit of a space nerd over the last six months or so. And I had really th a couple of things that really helped me along the way. So number one, I watched a few great videos of showing inside the International Space Station. So there is a great one hour, maybe 40 minute uh, YouTube videos that show the tour inside the International Space Station done by several astronauts. And what was interesting to me, I'll certainly link those in, in the description below. I, I encourage you to check them out. It took me several times to rewatch these videos and really uh, get a feel for an understanding of where things are located, which modules are connected to what, what kind of research is done in what modules. And those tours of the International Space Station were extremely informative to me because I, I had no idea that uh, where, where things are in relation to what because you typically if you watch any of the YouTube videos showing astronauts talking you don't really know where they're located and in fact they're typically in the Japanese segment of the space station because that has the most amount of space but I didn't know that until I saw that tour and that actually explained why that is the case and what's uh, why every other segment is very actually very crowded so certainly those ISS tours videos have been extremely helpful and actually, as you start to pay attention where things are, uh, next time you watch uh, a stream from the International Space Station, you'll actually see where astronauts are and, for example, where they greet the new arriving crew uh, from SpaceX, Dragon Capsule, for example, or where they make press conferences or where they exercise, where they look up, uh, or I should say look down on Earth and so on. So certainly encourage to check those out. That's a great first step for anyone who wants to at least familiarize themselves with the modules of the International Space Station, what kind of research is done there and so on. After that, I strongly encourage you to maybe read up a few uh, Wikipedia articles, but actually I would also encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know which of those modules you'd like me to do a bit of a deep dive on because I wanted to do videos on several of those. My personal favorite I think is the GEM, which is the Japanese experimental module. I'm super excited to talk about that in one of my future videos. So please subscribe for that so you don't miss that. But otherwise, let's go to the next source of information. Okay, so next bit of information that I found super uh, interesting to really start reading um, more or less routinely is uh, ISS on orbit report. So this is basically a log of all the activities or let's say uh, highlights of the activities of astronauts pretty much on a daily basis. And that particular uh, website, which is an official uh, NASA website, I'll certainly link to one of those blog entries in the description of the video. This is a great uh, resource that I have started to go into a habit of reading. Uh, more or less every few days or so. And that shows a lot of different day-to-day -day activities that astronauts have to do. And one of the things I realized is in NASA and in space station terminology, a lot of things are actually abbreviated. So you can get lost very quickly. But the more you read of those uh, uh, on-orbit reports, the more you would actually start to remember those abbreviations. For example, LSG stands for Life Science Glove Box or Human Research Facility RHF is another one of those. And certainly there's plenty of others. IROSA is ISS Rollout Solar Arrays, which is another video I've recently done. I've, I've done a short video on. So certainly encourage you to read those. It's a great source that goes back, I think, it, several years. I dug around a few of those. This was really fun to read. Just some of the earlier entries of what uh, astronauts were doing back then. Number three. Uh, the next um, piece of uh, data that I wanted to share with that I found super informative uh, as I was learning about uh, not just what space station is but what actually happens there is, uh, as you know, space station is the major uh, laboratory where a lot of science experiments are conducted. So most of the activities, in fact, on space station are scientific experiments. 
So as you can imagine, a great if you want to learn more about space station, you got to know what kind of research is being done there. And the great place to do that is uh, ISS National Labs, which is essentially the entity that uh, sponsors a lot of that research. And they have a, a website, which I'll link in the description as well to this video. And they have research information about all, all different missions that have been done, uh, sent to International Space Station, all kinds of experiments that, uh, that are conducted in space, which astronauts might be conducting some of those uh, research activities and so on. So this is a great resource. I found it extremely interesting as a scientist myself to learn more about different experiments like testing tissue printing or studying bone loss by virtue of um, uh, measuring bone density, for example, or checking the eye and how the microgravity affects eyesight and so on. There's plenty of research that is conducted on a daily basis. So use that information from ISS National Labs and try and cross-reference that with the ISS on orbit report. And before you know it, you're actually gonna start really seeing Okay, I read about that piece of research and I know now it's being done on that, uh, during that week or during that day on, on actually on board the International Space Station. SpaceX launches. So SpaceX launches, paying attention to those on official SpaceX uh, YouTube channel is something I've started doing. Uh, and now they have launches pretty much twice a week now at this point one's from California, one's from uh, Florida. So something I like to, to do if I get to catch them live if, is at least pay attention to what's being launched to space. So this is not necessarily something related to space station, but uh, as you realize, there is great uh, bit of infrastructure being developed for space economy overall. So you gotta also learn uh, things outside of space station, outside of where astronauts live. Because in fact, a lot of technologies that are being developed right now that are going into space have a huge tangible impact here on Earth. So I strongly encourage you to keep a t uh, pay attention to the payloads that SpaceX sends, not just Starlink satellites that they are that they're sending. These are obviously providing internet connectivity, but there's a plenty of other imaging satellites, military satellites, obviously, as well as other customers who want to do manufacturing in space. Okay, I said I, I, I would be done. This is the last tip, but in fact, one more bonus tip that I wanted to share is this is two books that I've, that I've read, which have completely blew my mind. A liftoff uh, book by Eric Berger, which I completely loved, which is a story of um, SpaceX history leading up to the first successful Falcon 1 launch many, many years ago now. It's a com it's fan fantastic story, uh, really showing the trials of tribulations of that crew of engineers, software developers, Elon Musk, obviously, how they've developed uh, that Falcon program, everything that it took them and what, how close they came to ultimately succeeding. So it's a, a tremendous story. But another great book that I've just finished reading is called Space Economy by Chad Anderson. Completely fantastic book if you really wanna know and just get a primer for space economy to sort of open your eyes, not just to things that are happening on the space station, but well outside of that and what role you can play in being a part of that economy. Space economy is just uh, entering this sort of S curve, that exponential curve, and a lot of investment is being done in space, well outside of just having astronauts working on some science experiments. There's tremendous amount of value uh, that can be brought back um, to Earth with the data, satellite data, for example, positioning data that, uh, that companies can collect uh, using, using all of that infrastructure that they deploy into orbit. So I strongly encourage you to pick both of those books up. Let me know what you think if you read them already. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe this video if you found it helpful. Certainly check out some of the other videos that I've done on this channel. I've recently done a video uh, showing top four experiments done by Axiom 2 private astronauts on board International Space Station, as well as many others. I'm going to also soon record a podcast episode with a very special guest. Uh, so please uh, subscribe and stay tuned for that episode when it drops. Uh, I'll, I'll see you all in the next video. Until next time, bye-bye.